AI agents are everywhere. They're exciting, they're very powerful, and they're changing the way we automate everything. But here's the truth. Just because you can use an AI agent doesn't mean you always should. So in this video, I'm going to break things down and explain when not to use AI agents and why they're not always the best choice when it comes to your automation workflows. There are times when actually adding an AI agent to your automation will slow things down, increase costs, or even introduce errors. So I'll show you different real life examples and automations so you can see exactly when using an AI agent is the wrong choice and what to do instead. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to build efficient automations that work for you and not against you. So without wasting too much time, let's jump right in. All right, so the first one and probably the most important one that has real life use case is going to be voice automations. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and download a workflow. Obviously, I'm gonna use NADN, but this will apply to all sorts of automation tools as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually download and bring in this workflow that we have created. And then afterwards, I'm gonna explain exactly why in this particular scenario, using an AI agent is the wrong choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this workflow here quickly. I'm gonna head over to my classroom here. Moody workflows and um, it was this one. Yep, the Vapi one. So I'm just gonna download all of these and then I will import them. Okay, these are three different workflows. So, but again, I'm gonna explain everything. So now let me go ahead and import these. All right, I'm gonna go import from file. Now let me import these. All right, so this is a restaurant um, automation that actually requires low latency. So let me explain what that means. When it comes to building workflows or automations that require natural conversation with the customer, in this particular uh, scenario, this is an automation workflow uh, that was built for restaurant reservations. So it has uh, several different options. And so let me actually zoom in a little bit because it's a little too small. Um, small. Yeah. So this particular scenario right here, this is when a customer calls is going to check availability for that particular uh, person and their group when they're reserving a reservation for their restaurant. This one in particular is going to handle reservation. And then this one is going to update the table availability. Again, if you're uh, interested in checking out the guide or the tutorial on this, make sure you check it out in the school community where you can go ahead and download this um, and then play around with it yourself. But this is just an example. In this particular scenario, as you can see, there's no AI agent used because of the fact that whenever you use an AI agent, especially when it comes to voice workflows or voice automations, if uh, a customer is sending a request or talking to that voice bot, you want to make sure that it is low latency, meaning that you don't not want to introduce a lag when it comes to the response from your bot or from your automation, right? Because that way, if you see that there's some kind of or if a customer sees that there's a lag in response, they might think that, oh, maybe this is not working or something has gone wrong. So in this particular scenario, speed is incredibly important. You want to make sure that the the automation or the bot is responding in a very natural way. Therefore, if you were to add any auto, uh, AI agent in this particular scenario, because AI agent has the ability and requires logic because it needs to make a decision on which tool to use when it's uh, responding to a particular query, then it's going to slow down and therefore that lag that it's going to introduce. So in this particular example, as you can see, everything is coming in via webhook and this webhook is basically grabbing information from VAPI. We're using VAPI in this particular restaurant reservation. And again, if you're interested in checking out this full tutorial, it is available, so check it out. But in this particular situation, again, we're sending all of that information that the customer is requesting or the customer is talking to this particular um, AI uh, workflow or this uh, automation workflow via this webhook. So afterwards, this webhook is being sent to further notes in uh, NADN. And the only place where we're using AI is right here to parse the information. But again, there's a big difference between at least in NADN between using an open AI node, for example, which is, you know, uh, different than an AI agent, because the AI agent requires actually to make a decision on which tool to use. But this one in particular, is just given a particular task or a simple task to process um, and grab and extract the date in this scenario. But it's sending all of that information to the rest of the workflows. And that's why the speed of this workflow is extremely fast compared to an AI agents. So now let me go ahead and show you what an AI agent workflow looks like if you were to use this with a voice automation, right? So I'm gonna go ahead to my classroom again. Actually, let me start a new workflow. Yeah, that's good. 
if I go to deep dive topics here. So this is where I created the entire voice agent series with 11 labs. So in this particular one, for example, uh, right here, let me grab the workflow, JSON file, download, go here. All right, let me grab that. All right, there you go. So in this particular one, as you can see, I am using 11 labs. And again, same thing, I've done the tutorial for this. So if you wanna go check that out, please uh, free to do so. Uh, but in this particular scenario, the webhook, same thing, it's coming in and uh, being processed an AI agent. And then once the information is sent here, then the AI agent actually uses its prompt to be able to reach out to different tools. So in this particular scenario, uh, you know, this will introduce a certain amount of lag. And therefore, in this, in this example, in my opinion, if your AI bot or your AI automation um, requires low latency, then this is a bad idea to use AI agents in this scenario. So you want to make sure you're using something like this, we're using code node, or if you need to have some kind of a quick AI node in there, use lang instance of Langchain. So there's several uh, nodes that is available in uh, NADN. So all of these besides the AI agent uh, will be a lot quicker because they're made for a particular single task and doesn't require any kind of logic. So this is a perfect example of when to not use AI agent in your automations. All right, so the second scenario on when not to use AI agent will be in situation where tasks are clear and have unchanging rules. So for example, if you have a task that requires a very strict process that it's following, then you don't need to have an AI agent there because if there's no need for logic, then AI agent is completely unnecessary. And again, it will introduce most cost, more cost, it will reduce the speed of that automation, and it will also potentially introduce any kind of hallucination, then again, is a completely unnecessary necessary step, right? So therefore, in a scenario like this, for example, if you have a situation where somebody is signing up using a form on your website, and you need to send a automatic confirmation email, then that's where you can just use an automation. So let me actually go ahead and build that and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So in this particular scenario, let's say you have a website where somebody is signing up, or they're using a contact form, and you're using this form submission, right? Then after each submission, you basically the only task that your automation is doing is a sending an email confirmation with all of that information that is being submitted via the form, then you don't need to add any kind of AI agents because in this particular scenario, it's a very simple, straightforward, unchanging rule that, that doesn't require any kind of logic. Therefore, AI agent is completely unnecessary. So let's go ahead and actually walk through this. So I'm going to create this form test uh, testing. I'm just going to say name uh, and then do email. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll explain exactly what I mean. Uh, after I put this through. All right, so that, that's good enough at this point again. So on form submitting. So this is the um, step where we'll submit that information. So all I'm doing is again, just sending an email, right? So if I do a Gmail here, and let's say I'm sending myself a, a draft actually, create a draft. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a submit here. Test step. Oh, I gotta shut this down first because I gotta get some data. Test step. All right, there we go. So here I'll, I'll need to use Jack Smith. Jack at gmail, oops, at gmail.com. Okay, so I click on submit here. And now that data is being sent. So now my only requirement is to send a confirmation back to Jack in this particular case saying, Hey, thank you for submitting your workflow. Or thank you for your registration. You will be contacted shortly for, for with additional information or something like that, right? So in this particular scenario, all we're doing is thanks for sign up. And then I'm literally grabbing the email. Oh, sorry, I said create draft. Actually, I'm just sending an email here. Message send. Yep, to grabbing here. Thanks for signing up. Hi, thank you for signing up. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna send my email so that we can at least see. Let's go ahead and try that again. I'm gonna do test step. Who's there? Oops. There you go. Submit. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and submit that. Boom. All right, so now let's go ahead and test this thing. So I'm going to click on test step. And there you go. Basically, end of automation, right? So if I go to my email now, and there we go, you have an automation that was sent, right? So again, it requires a very simple step. No need for introducing complication by introducing an AI agent. Again, this is extremely simple, obviously, but you can imagine that for scenarios that are very simple, straightforward, doesn't need any logic, it just needs step A, B, C, D, then you don't need any kind of AI agent to be introduced there. All right, so that was two. The third one is going to be scenarios where you actually can use additional nodes where same thing when logic is not required, but with reaching out to an API, if that's the only requirement or if that's the only thing that you need to do outside of your automation workflow and you can use uh, a code node and you can use other nodes and NADN in particular, uh, then this will be a perfect example of that. So for example, this is something that I grabbed from the NADN community members. I didn't make this. Uh, this is a very simple LinkedIn profile enrichment workflow. So here what's happening is that we're literally pulling data from a Google Sheet, we're filtering it and we're reaching out to a third party or a website. In this partic particular scenario, we're, we're reaching out to uh, Rapid API. Uh, and grabbing or uh, enriching the data for this particular customer, for example. And this is using this uh, Rapid API LinkedIn tool to enrich the data that's coming in about a particular customer. And then it's updating the Google Sheet here, right? So it's very simple. Again, there's literally no need for AI at all, not even a single node that requires anything AI related. So this is going to be one of those options or in scenarios where if you don't need to use anything AI related, why would you? Because now that adds additional complexities to your workflows. It might add additional costs that you're not, uh, that you don't need to occur. On top of that, in this particular scenario, what's happening here is that if you are running thousands of records to enrich a profile, for example, right? Uh, so again, in this in this scenario, this is uh, workflow is ideal for, you know, recruiters and sales professionals who want to enrich their leads and want to grab more information about a particular customer from their LinkedIn. So in this scenario, it's actually extremely cheap with this particular automation because the only cost would be this rapid API cost. Now, if you were to add an AI agent, obviously you could add an AI node here and it will probably achieve the similar outcome, but then now you're adding the complexity of AI possibly hallucinating. You're adding the cost of the tokens that will be used, whether you're using chat GPT or we're using, um, open AI or Claude or wherever it may be, it's completely unnecessary, right? Because it's less efficient if you were to use an AI agent and more expensive actually, right? Versus here, as you can see, this is basically very simple, very quick, and it's gonna be extremely cost effective in the long term if you have thousands of records or if this automation is live and you're constantly updating it if you're running it on a schedule trigger or something like that, right? So this is gonna be one of those other scenarios where AI agent is completely unnecessary. Okay, and the last one is going to be when you can actually use an AI node rather than an AI agent. And I'm going to explain because this might be a little confusing. So there's going to be times where you actually don't need to use an AI agent in particular. If again, your workflow or your automation does not require the AI agent to make a decision to use a certain tool for a task or whether it's uh, using a particular decision making skill that needs to achieve a goal, right? So if it's being if your automation workflows require only a simple task that an AI node is required, but that task can be prompted using the instance of Langchain and NADN, then that could be done very simply, because it's going to be a lot more straightforward. And it's not gonna introduce any kind of logical fallacies, or it might not require any independent decision making skill. So again, let me go ahead and download a workflow here. So this, for instance, is going to be a email example, email classification example. So if I head over to my automation, this was, let's see, Gmail labeling, right? So it's this one, download this, go back here, import file. Okay, so in this particular example, what's happening here is the only thing I'm doing in this automation is I'm adding a Gmail trigger to watch for incoming emails. And all I'm doing is labeling each email based on the topic. 
and the topic is or based on these labels that I've created, which is going to be specific to topics like sponsoring, collaboration, business inquiries and others. Right. So I'm uh, grabbing each email and labeling it with this automation. So the only thing I'm doing is a very straightforward one direction or one prompt that I'm giving to this particular workflow that requires an AI node, of course, but it doesn't require an AI agent because in this scenario, there is no need to introduce a logic or making independent decision or making or having the um, independent decision making ability, right? Therefore, I'm just using this AI node here that is native to link uh, to N8N, which these are basically instance of land chain. So if you go to add node here and go to advanced AI, I know I touched on this a little bit earlier when I was talking about the first example with the voice automation with Vapi. But here, uh, as you can see, this is the AI agent node that we we're talking about. And then the rest of them right here. So all of these, these are instance of land chain, meaning that these nodes are AI nodes. However, they require a simple system prompt that's going to be doing one particular thing, right? And in this case, here is just labeling an email based on these different categories, right? Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. So the system prompt here is please classify the text provided by the user into one of the following categories, right? And I'm providing the category here and then use the provided formatting instruction below. Don't explain only output JSON. Very simple task. I'm only giving it this task to categorize the emails. And that's exactly what the output is going to be. It doesn't need to have access to additional tools to make any decision to use those tools for these for any particular reasons. Very simple, very straightforward, requires an AI, but doesn't need to make independent decisions on its own. In this particular case, don't use an AI agent. All right, so hopefully that made sense. So these are all the different scenarios. I mean, obviously there's more things, but these are uh, what I have observed based on my experience that an AI agent is completely unnecessary and it creates actually problems rather than solutions. So therefore, make sure when you're building your workflows, you're considering these different options. A few bonus things. So for example, there's going to be scenarios if you're building automations that require sensitive information or information that there is no room or workflows that has no room for any kind of hallucination. That's another use case where you would not use an AI agent if it's something that's extremely sensitive, right? At least at its current form, obviously AI agents are going to improve as time goes by. But until then, I have noticed that there are times where some of the answers or some of the outputs from AI agents might be a bit more unpredictable. Therefore, in those particular situations, you want to make sure that if you can get away with not using an AI agent, then just don't. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you found that information helpful. If you wanted to learn more, make sure you join the uh, AI workshop community where we have amazing group of people doing really cool things and making amazing projects. We have live calls, we have classroom sections that's full of incredible knowledge like deep type topics about NADNs, vector databases, AI agents in particular, uh, voice AI agents, much, much more. Our community is incredible. They create amazing automation workflows themselves where the collective wisdom of the entire community, which is right now around almost 700 people. So make sure if you're serious about learning NADN and building AI agents for your personal use, for your business, make sure you join the school community. I'm going to put the link in the description. Hopefully I'll see you there. Make sure you like and subscribe because I've got some amazing content and tutorials that are upcoming. So hopefully I'll see you in the future videos and in the school community as well. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you on the next one.